In this video, I'm going to go through the process of setting up your first Teespring campaign, but we're going to actually use one of the examples that we did in the previous module where we designed a t-shirt for pilots. So we're going to use that example and we're going to go ahead and create that full campaign and then list it and make it live. So let's go ahead and start. So the first thing I've done, I've just logged into my Teespring account. And if you don't have a Teespring account, it's really, really simple to get one. So let me just actually log out here. Let's sign out. And when you go to teespring.com, just click on login at the top there. And if you want to create a new account, just click create new account here. Enter in your email and password and just create your account. It's really that simple. So I'll just go ahead and log in here. Then once you're logged in, and also I've noticed that I like to... Um, I like to log in and create designs using Chrome, Google Chrome browser, as opposed to Firefox. For some reason, um, it just the, the designer works a little better for me inside of Chrome. It may be my computer, I'm not sure, because for some reason this designer in here works differently on different my, on some different computers that I own. So let's go ahead and click on launch new campaign here. And the designer I'm talking about is this thing right here. It, it sort of behaves a little differently on on the Firefox, I notice that when I upload an image into here, it looks all like pixely. It doesn't look very smooth, which is no big deal because it all smooths out by the time you actually list the campaign. But in Chrome, it actually makes it look nice in here while you're designing. All right, so that, that shirt that we created, we've already created the graphic for it and um, it's all ready to go. So if you missed that, please watch uh, the videos there in the previous module to see how we design the actual shirt from scratch using Photoshop. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is a shirt that we're going to create. I'm going to do it on black. Black has traditionally been the best selling shirt um, from my experience and also from other Teespringers that I've, I've talked to and I've also the groups I'm part of. Everyone usually says that the dark shirts sell better. So I rec I'd recommend trying um, the black shirt or the navy, uh, the navy blue is usually a good one I've tried a lot so I'm gonna just gonna go with the black one and I'm gonna click on upload art here but I do want to show you kinda of everything involved inside here so you can get a, get a flavor of what we're doing or how to use it so you can use the features in here like you can add your own text like keep calm and you can see it added the text right into the designer and you can choose your text that you want to use in here so they give you some different different options something like that and we can change the color right here it's it's really self-explanatory pretty simple to use right we can add more text here alright so once that's set we can move it around so you select it and you can change the text keep calm and then just select somewhere just left click somewhere other than that object in the shirt to add another text object now I believe there no there's no duplicate button there you have to create new objects every time keep calm and and be cool. <laughs> it's just an example, obviously. I wouldn't uh, post this shirt anywhere. And so we can grab the little thing here. We can resize. We can also uh, rotate if we'd want. And they also have the option of adding art here. You can upload your own stuff, which we're going to do here for this design. But there's also a uh, art gallery that they have in here whole bunch of different stuff you can add in here like I, I notice a lot of people add like these sort of things or like with if they're doing like nursing and stuff you've got a logo right here you don't have to go hunting for one so it's kinda handy can even change the color of it keep calm you got to put all sorts of little logos in there they got a lot of different stuff in here so it's really cool neat stuff you can add in there look at all this stuff military yeah just 
weapons. Oh, they got a sub. They got the subcategories as well. So there's definitely a lot of different um, things you can put in there from their little art gallery thing. So that's pretty cool. That comes in very handy if you just want to use their own designer and come up with your own quick design. And they don't even need to use Photoshop. I use Photoshop all the time because I love Photoshop. But you can you can do some pretty cool designs here just by using their own stuff and come up with a cool saying. And what's nice, you don't even need a designer, right? Like. Um, you could find like one thing you could do is for example let's say you go to Google and type in um, funny hockey sayings something like that and you get a whole bunch of hockey slogans and uh, here's a, a huge page of hockey slogans I was actually just looking at this page yesterday so I know about it but there's tons of stuff like I don't know, let's look at all this stuff reaching high keeps a man on his toes <laughs> it's hard to fail but it's worse never to have tried to succeed like just a bunch of different stuff to do with hockey in here more at the front here fire in my heart and ice in my veins so you can take this idea and you can actually just throw it in here and and play around with it maybe there's some hockey uh hockey stuff in here let's look at sports winter sports is anything to do with hockey well there we go we got a hockey thing there <laughs> That's a cool one. Big skull. So, if we um, take the skull, we could use one of those sayings from the, using that skull, I guess, you know. Uh, fire in my heart, ice in my veins. That could work with that saying, right? So, that's kind of cool. Fire in my heart. ice in my I don't use this very often you can see I'm kind of fumbling around here <laughs> ice in my and then do another one veins it's kind of fun actually ice in my veins Anyhow, you can see how quickly you can actually do a shirt design just by using what they already provide there. But all right, let's actually use the the design that we're going to uh, take here from our hard drive. So let's go ahead and upload that. Pilots. This is the one that we created in the previous video. Uh, which one is it? That one. This one right here. So I'm going to take advantage of all the space here and, and let it center itself. Keep calm and drop your gear. <laughs> I'm a pilot. It's a pretty funny shirt. So it took up all the space. You'll notice that sometimes there's little jagged edges on the on the graphic, but don't worry, that sorts itself out by the time you actually launch it. So let's go to the next part. And this part here is where we add the um, some more details. And the details are we want to set the minimum number of sales that we have to uh, do in order for the shirt to be printed. So. I usually do 20 or 50 but I used to always do 50 but lately I've just been doing 20 just because uh, you know if it doesn't reach 50 then you have to request a goal um, reduction in order to get it to be printed you can only see the minimum you can set it is 10 so even if you had to set like 500 or something like that you can actually and you only sell let's say like you know 20 shirts or 30 shirts or something like that you can actually contact Teespring just going to support at teespring.com and just send them your link to your campaign and say, look, can you please lower the goal down to uh, 20 or something like that so that it will be printed and shipped. As long as it's, as it's over 10, as long as it is over 10, then you will be able to get it shipped and printed no matter what. So that's a cool thing. But I always just set it to 10. Now, here's one thing. If we actually set it 
at a higher um, a goal amount, like say 500, you will make more profit per shirt. And you can actually see the profit amount show up down here in real time. So let's say I'm going to set this shirt at 1950, which is one of the prices I usually use, 1950 or uh, 2150, 2250, or 2450 have gone up to, or 1999, I do that as well. I like the 50, seems to work pretty good. Um, you can see it's $12.46 profit per, per sale, that's if you make 500 shirts, right? Now if you do 50, you'll see you only get $11. If you do 20, we'll get $10. But here's, here's the thing though, Let's say we, we set it to 20 here, right, which I'm going to, and we actually sell 500 shirts. So what Teespring will do is they will actually give you 75% of that profit that you missed out on if you would have originally set it to 500. I know that sounds confusing, but basically they just give you bonus money for selling more than your goal. That's all you really have to know. <laughs> And the amount is exactly 75% of what it should have been. So I'll show you what I mean. So right now it's $10.50. But let's say I sold 500. That's $12.46. So if I take if I take 12.46 and I subtract it by what it was at 20, which was 10.50. That's a dollar ninety six difference. Okay, now you take seventy five percent of that times .75. That's a dollar forty seven. So what Teespring will do in this in, in this scenario, let's say we set it to twenty and we have our campaign launched, but we sell five hundred shirts. Teespring will give us an additional dollar forty seven per shirt sale of all the shirts over twenty. So that would be um, 500 minus 20 is so 480 shirts will actually get an additional dollar 47 or it may be all the shirts actually it might be 500 shirts get the dollar 47 extra in any case you're gonna get that money back anyways you'll lose out in 25 percent if you don't set it to that originally but it's not really that big of a deal because I find if you do a campaign and you set it up to like 500 when people that go reserve a copy or they they come to your, your sales page, your campaign page, and you see that the limit is 500, they'll be like, well, I don't want to order this shirt because it's not going to be printed, right? 500 is such a big number. But if you set like 20, people will be like, oh, it's only 20. 20 will probably sell and I'll get my shirt. So that's why I stick to 20. Okay, let's move on here and go down to the, uh, the next part and add some new this is actually kind of new. This wasn't around when I first started, so this is really exciting stuff. <laughs> you can set your colors right here, your facing color if you'd like. I'm going to keep it at black, but this is where you can add additional shirts. So I always like adding the women's tee because I'm going to actually promote to both men and women. And I'm also going to add a tank top because it's, you know, summertime's coming up here. And even though it's summer, I'll still add in the hoodie just in case if I make a sale or two you never know no usually that's usually what I'll do so with a hoodie I always go 3950 or 3999 if I'm doing 1999 I just make sure all these numbers are 99 if I'm doing 50 they're all 50 so I just make the decimal all the same and I try to keep the um, the profit per shirt about the same so this one here would have to be 21 so 2150 the tank top and these two I'll just leave at that too so to make the profit about the same and so basically that's usually all I do you can add more products down here that are not listed so we've got a whole bunch, everything here you want basically camouflage stuff that's not up here so anyhow I'm not going to add any of those but that's it for that step And for the final step, what we have to do is we have to enter in our campaign title, our description, and then our campaign length. The length of my campaigns, I usually only do seven days and five days. And you see five days are not even showing up in here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. 
sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I, oh, yeah, I think I do. I know. <laughs> it has to do with holidays. So if there's a holiday going on or anything like that, then it, it may skip in here. You may not get the seven-day option or something like that. But I'll just do seven days. So I've actually done three-day campaigns, and this is uh, something that's pretty cool, and you can definitely test out. Well, three days is only 72 hours. So when I run a discount, I'll do, like, right at the very top, I'll be something like this, like, 72 hours only something like that and even in my ad on Facebook it'd be 72 hours only and then this would be gone forever that really helps if it gains traction real fast so it's just a scarcity thing I don't actually see anyone doing that I, I've done it a few times with great success so it's something you can definitely try I'll just stick the seven days for this example and then we create a, a custom URL and here's a here's something I've noticed I've gone through like hours and hours of research like on a single shirt or a single concept before and I'll, I'll get all the way to this part I got my design done I'm ready to go and I and I just start typing in like uh, okay like drop your gear right and all of a sudden I'll be like like right now it's not taken but I'll, I'll notice that oh my god it's taken oh my goodness <laughs> and then you go and check it out and all of a sudden someone's already made my shirt <laughs> so sometimes what I like doing is before I do anything I'll actually come and just create a fake campaign and come right to the end and just start typing in what I would want my shirt title to be my shirt URL and see if it's already taken and make sure that um, you know that shirt was already not done by someone else and it may not get any sales that doesn't happen all the time but it's just one of those little things that I do once in a while so we'll use that drop your gear and so the next thing we want to do here is enter in our uh, title and I don't make it very elaborate I, I don't know a lot of people put limited edition or something like that I don't know I find it didn't make any difference at all <laughs> just keep calm and drop your gear good enough that's all I do and in here I had all sorts of elaborate stuff going on inside my description I've tried all sorts of different things images you name it all a bunch of stuff and from my experience I find that the shorter the better really that's about it and you'll see like a lot of those campaigns that have like thousands of sales they hardly have any content at all on the page now don't take my word for it and don't think that everything that I say is the way it should be because I'm definitely don't know everything to do with Teespring but I'm just I'm just explaining my own experiences so at the end of the day you really have to test this for yourself and really try it out but I just keep things pretty short and not too complicated right so let's go through some of the things I like putting on here and um, the description I'm gonna put in here I actually origin I didn't come up with it myself I I got it from uh, I think it was a product called the tipping machine It's a really really good little uh, PDF document awesome document to be honest and I'll try to put some sort of resource link somewhere in the members area here so you can take a look at it the tipping machine maybe you can just search it on Google to find it it was a JVZoo product it was really good they had a really good idea for a description I've been using it and it's been pretty good so let's go ahead and use that description and what I'm going to do is actually show you another tool I just put into my T inspector um, it's called I called it databank it's um, it's this tool here and basically what it is it's just sort of like a little tool where I can just keep some information that I use for all my my Teespring campaigns in Facebook ads I had, not, I had created another tool for myself that does this but I decided to integrate it into T Inspector for you guys. So this is awesome. You know, if you got T Inspector, definitely use it. If not, just I just save stuff like in a text document or something like that. Um, but uh, this is that description I was talking about. And the way that this works in my software is you just click on the things you see up here. These are my content labels. So this is all the content. And then um, if you click on it, there's two pieces of information. There's the label and then there's the content. And down here the label is put into this box and then the content is put into here and so all I do is I just save the content here so if I want it all I have to do is just double click up here and it's already copied to my clipboard and then just go to my page right click and paste and there's my description and so when is this going to end time limited time only ending um, June 2nd and then I'll just put the t-shirt name here keep calm and 
drop your gear. So make that bold. Guaranteed safe and secure checkout. This helps reassure that the, sa the site is safe to the customer. Um, click buy it now or reserve it now. Teespring has been changing the, the button so I had to add this in there. And basically that's it. That's all it, I did for the description. You hit please agree. And then you go ahead and you list the campaign. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and list it. Launch. It should only take a second here. Well, maybe not a second, maybe 10 seconds. There we go. Our campaign is fully live and ready to take orders and it will be ending eight days. That's kind of weird. That should be seven days. That means I'll have to go in and change this to the third. Interesting. Anyhow. And I also want some spaces in this description. So, all right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.